So when we're talking about homelessness in Humboldt County, it's important to recognize that there are several key uh, populations that we're serving with homelessness. We have homeless children, we have homeless veterans, and we have homeless locals that were born and raised here and through economic hardship have found themselves homeless. One of the things that we can do to address this is to increase the av available housing stock by addressing restrictions on the uh, code that allows us to build housing. We can increase our housing density. We can also address uh, the size of units that are allowed to be built so that we can focus on tiny homes and things like that that provide transitional housing opportunities for young families and uh, young single people. And we can also address uh, living wage jobs, having more living wage job opportunities and fostering growth in our economy so that there are higher wages available for uh, addressing the housing stock once it's there to be inhabited. And uh, for Eureka specifically, I think it's really crucial that the county and the city of Eureka work together to see how they can put pressure at the state level for uh, restrictions on development and uh, because this is a California statewide problem, this lack of housing that uh, affects communities throughout our state. So it definitely, there needs to be work at the state level to ensure that these restrictions are addressed, that we can allow more housing development in areas that make sense and address the density issues. Uh, one of the other things that we can do is focus on training programs, uh, programs that ha help people get the life skills they need. I don't know if most people know this, but you graduate high school these days not knowing how to balance a checkbook, which is a critical life skill. People need to be able to budget themselves and to be able to afford affordable housing in the first place. So uh, educating our population, making sure that our kids are coming out of schools with that education is critical. Quite succinctly, what I would do to address the homeless population at the county level is I would work very, very uh, stridently on creating a permanent homeless camp on county property near transportation services away from Old Town. We have to accept that our homeless population is here to stay. Since the 1980s, our homeless population has grown significantly throughout the entire country, especially on the West Coast. Uh, we, do not, we don't have subsidies for psychiatric centers and we have deinstitutionalized our uh, mentally ill and we've got to come up with ways to do things like they did in Seattle. Seattle University actually decided to have their very own homeless encampment that's a permanent camp. Uh, they have 11 permanent camps in the city of Seattle. We need a new paradigm. We need our elected leaders to accept the reality that with the disparity in income our uh, homeless population is here to stay. What are we going to do to uh, effectively help them and effectively work on dealing with uh, Eureka downtown area and other places where we're seeing the criminal element of the homeless population. What I'd like to say about Eureka in particular, uh, for example, when I talked to the Eureka Police Department, did you know that there's on average three officers plus a sergeant on staff? We have 28,605 people living in the city of Eureka. We only have 49 officers. They are doing as much as they can. They have a MIST program. They are. Um, uh, they have a crime prevention uh, through environmental design and they will work with, with local owners to create ways to keep the criminal element out of their uh, breezeways, etc. Um, I think that we need to work harder on beautification projects, those areas that are breaking down and falling apart, like the closing of what they call the Heroin Hilton on 3rd Street. I think that, that was a great stride forward. I think that we need to focus on subsidizing rents to help startup businesses and we need to focus on millennials. It's unfortunate that people seem to think that the county and the city are not in this together because we are. And we won't get anything done unless we do work together. And I'm a firm believer in alone you go fast and together you go far. And that's what we need to concentrate on. When I was at the city of Eureka for 10 years, I swore there was no communication between the city and the county. And I have done my hardest to change that. And we work really closely together and I think it's showing. And we have to continue doing that. In fact, throughout the state, um, cities and counties are finding out they need each other. Uh, the League of California Cities and the California State Association of Counties recently released a report of best practices and what other communities are doing to make a difference in the homeless population, whether your county or your city. And um, we can learn by following what others do. One thing we've learned is we're missing units and um, building is not easy and we know that. 
So what can we do to make it easier? What can we do to help developers actually make building housing, um, buildings happen? And what we can do is we can give them incentives. We can help them be successful in getting grants. One of the things I did recently was change the entire voucher system from, from people-based to project-based, which means those vouchers can now be used as matching grants for projects. And that is the one thing that happened that made the most recent veterans project that's, been, um, that's moving forward happen. It was lacking, they were turned down for two years, and the change that I led made the difference. We can also help people rehab their units. Um, there are many that are under code that just need a little bit of help. And subsidized housing, you have to be up to code, so we can help um, landlords make those um, housing available units um, for people in a very quick fashion. And I think we can help with the housing trust fund that we've just established. And also we need to have a robust landlord recruitment and incentive program that actually mitigates landlords so that they're willing to take a risk on folks. I think the challenges that are facing the business community actually depend on which business you are. Some people are going to be concerned about Amazon and online ordering. Others are going to be worried about um, public safety issues in their shopping district. And I think there's others who are really concerned right now about the rising rents due to um, the influx in cannabis business. And I think there's a different approach to try to address each one of those issues. As far as um, ordering online, I think it's really important that we learn to stress customer service. I don't think it's quite the same as it was in the old days. I can't tell you how many times I've gone places and I feel like I'm not wanted and that's really not what we want. We want to bring people into the shopping district because they want to be there and they feel appreciated. They also want to feel safe and I think that is a big issue for a lot of our local businesses. And what we can do is um, find ways to help beef up security and, and minimize issues. I think actually Measure Z funds would be a great use for these, these types of things where you can have organizations such as Main Street and the Henderson, and Henderson Center Merchants Associations actually asking for funding for um, security services because that's perfectly appropriate. And then I also believe that um, as we can move further on in dealing with issues of homelessness, uh, drug, drugs and mental health, um, those issues will start abating to some extent. And then in regards to increasing in rents, I think unfortunately some of what we're going to see is um, just waiting to see what happens with the industry. We all know that a lot of businesses can open, but a lot of them won't stay open. So I think the, the rent situation is just going to have to be something that, that finally comes into balance on its own. But those are the three I can think off the hand, off the top of my head, that I, I'm, I think are, are a pretty good description of what I've heard in the community. Similar to the issue with homelessness, we face a lot of issues with having opportunity for folks in our community and this affects our businesses locally. When our economy is, is in a downturn, uh, we have less money flowing through the economy as evidenced with the recent decline in the cannabis industry, uh, we don't have enough money to spend in our shops locally. Uh, the average median salary in the area is $33,000 a year. The average median salary for the United States of America is 55000 Our cost of living in Eureka is also much higher than it is elsewhere in the country. And these are all contributing factors to having less money uh, flowing through our economy, through our businesses. One of the things we can do to address this is to encourage living wage jobs, higher wage jobs that uh, can allow people to have extra income to go spend in the, our local businesses. Other ways we can address this is to focus on marketing our community to tourism and uh, bringing in more of those tourism dollars. The other thing that I see we can do for these situations is to incentivize businesses to pay higher wages that are already existing by giving them either tax breaks at the local level or other uh, encouragement that is available to us through economic policy to help people spend more money in our economy because that's really where our business thrives is when we have people spending money in the economy. What do I believe the biggest challenges are uh, for Eureka businesses? I think that we are in a strategic position to move forward into a different kind of economy. I think that we need to recognize very clearly that our median age in Eureka is 35 years old. Our unemployment rate is relatively low, but our household income is only $38,000 on average in Eureka. Now let's think about that. 
Sales are up for one of my friend's businesses. They're up 20% from last year. She has a great little cafe in Old Town and she's marketing to that income and to, and to that age group. And that makes a big difference. I think we also need to market who we are. We need to market to uh, not only the millennials, we need to market to the nation. Lonely Planet has ranked us as a county, as one of the most beautiful, as the most beautiful place to come visit. We shouldn't be sending our folks up to Crescent City to sleep. We should be keeping them here. We need to be focusing on how to create more opportunities for those who are traveling through our area, as well as opportunities for folks to have more businesses in our area. We also need to um, uh, focus on the fact that there is a shift in our economy. There's been a downturn in our latest economy, the marijuana economy. There's been other booms and busts in our, in our local area. I think it's time that we start focusing on what we can do for the folks that live here. What can we supply for them? Um, uh, how can we make things good for them? I think that, again, as I m mentioned previously, the crime prevention through environmental design uh, that the Eureka Police Department has put in place is a fantastic, one of the fantastic ideas. I also think that we need to focus on, um, again, beautification projects in the Old Town area. Let's take a moment and talk about Measure Z. Measure Z is going to expire in 2019. Now, Measure Z is going to expire in 2019. While I understand um, that the folks in Eureka, I live in Eureka, and I agree that most of the sales taxes have been collected by the businesses in the greater uh, uh, population areas of Eureka and, and Arcata. Although um, we have received, well, although we have given most of the tax dollars, I can tell you, for example, that Measure Z funds were mostly meant for countywide projects. Sometimes we forget that the city of Eureka is part of the county of Eureka. We are the county seat of Eureka. While the Sheriff's Department received $4,369,342 last year to help uh, uh, staffing uh, to create uh, 38 patrols, uh, um, to pay for corrections department, community services, and staff, the Eureka Police Department received $419,140, which only created two officer positions and um, helped with the homeless services program somewhat by creating one small liaison. Now that means that Eureka Police Department received 10% of what the Humboldt County Sheriff's Department received. I think that most people don't recognize that it's an application system, and I think that it's been uh, not a very well-approached outreach system for people to recognize how the funds are being dispersed and the fact that the funds are going to be gone as of next year. I would maybe support a citywide measure where there was a city tax so that city tax dollars on businesses that are in the city of Eureka could be spent on the city of Eureka, especially in creating uh, more safety and uh, um, other beautification projects that would improve uh, the greater Eureka area. I've always been a proponent for Eureka and any Measure Z proposal they bring forward. And that's kind of where the challenge has been. Communities that bring proposals forward are the ones who get the money. And so that's why the percentage does not work uh, unless we change it in the next ballot measure, which could be an option. Uh, what I find on my, my experience on the board is I am only one of five individuals. And while I can advocate very strongly for what I believe the city needs, you got to convince four other people. And our dis this county in, in, in its entirety represents 135,000 people over 4,400 square miles. And even though not all those dollars, you know, all those, these dollars seem to be generated in the city of Eureka, the fact of the matter is a good portion of those people who spend the money in the city of Eureka expect to have safe roads and public safety where they live as well outside of Eureka. So it's kind of a challenge when dealing with an entire board of individuals. What I would say is the city of Eureka in whole does receive more dollars when you consider monies that are given to nonprofits, such as the $300,000 to Waterfront Recovery Services and to the Boys and Girls Club. But there's a lot more opportunities, and I think what the city needs to do is take advantage of turning in more proposals. In one of the earlier questions, I mentioned the fact that local organizations can apply for funds, such as Main Street, and I think that's a really good opportunity for Eureka as a bigger picture to receive more Measure Z funds. And it makes sense, and it would be fair, um, but again, in order to receive the funding, they have to submit proposals, and so I'd say submit as many as possible, ask what you think you need, and um, then advocate with the Measure Z Committee, and then again with the Board of Supervisors. So that's the best, um, ex I think that's the best uh, course to take, and I hope people do take advantage of that. 
Given that Eureka is the uh, county seat and the biggest economic hub for our community, we contribute the highest amount of Measure Z funds to that tax uh, base. One of the things I think we need to do is, is see a larger amount of that money received by the city of Eureka to tackle projects related to homelessness, affordable housing, and uh, economic opportunities, especially you know, fixing infrastructure that allows for more economic opportunity to develop. Uh, Eureka pays the lion's share of the tax and they should get a little bit more of that tax. I think the current way of, of having applications for specific projects is a, usually a great way to go when you're trying to equitably distribute funds. But in the case of Eureka, where we bear the brunt of the burden for having the courthouse there, the jail there, and many of our social services, uh, Eureka isn't seeing enough of those monies to make a worthwhile impact on, the, on our com community. One of the things a county supervisor can do is not only encourage the city of Eureka to pursue more applications under the Measure Z funds, but can encourage them to pass their own roads tax of a quarter cent and that would contribute to, to Eureka directly from the sales they receive in Eureka directly. The other thing that a supervisor can do is not beyond encouraging on, on applications, is help them figure out what applications will make it through the Citizens Advisory Committee uh, that are desperately needed for the district and help them apply for those projects. Uh, one of the things Senator McGuire does that's wonderful for our community is he actively plays a role in acquiring grants and other monies for our community and he doesn't just get us started and then leave us to our own devices. He follows through and that's something we need from our leadership in the county.